Mothership really came about as a way of kind of upping the ante um, from the first time around when we lifted off with a piece called Warehouse Medicine in the first YouTube symphony. The project started with Michael saying, we need to do a brand new piece, and the new element is going to be soloists who join up with the orchestra from different locations around the world. And I immediately thought, okay, that's not going to happen. It's too difficult. I don't see how that could ever work, even in the 21st century. And then I started thinking about it, and I thought about the concept of a mothership, which would be the orchestra that's joined up um, or docked by these, these different soloists at different times in the piece. The first time I heard orchestral music was not in a concert of the Beethoven Fifth Symphony. It was more like the experience that many people today have when they first hear an orchestra. It's on the album of, say, a Pink Floyd uh, release, or Radiohead would be the heirs to Pink Floyd today, where there are lots of lush orchestral backdrops, or Bjork, um, or even in film you hear quite a lot of um, orchestral sounds. And I was just totally captivated by the huge palette, the huge amount of possibility that you get from an orchestra. You know, really, the orchestra is the world's greatest synthesizer. When I was first writing for orchestra, it was for orchestra alone. At the same time, though, when I moved out to San Francisco, I started to get fascinated with techno music. And I was living something of um, a schizophrenic life because I would often be DJing at night and then I would be writing for orchestras um, the very next day. And these are totally different spaces and people think of them as 100% different. But you know, music all over the world is related. It all has the same DNA. So really what I've started to do now is not only include the propulsive rhythms of techno and hip hop and drum and bass in the orchestra, but also some of the imaginative elements of electronics. The recordings of, um, of an earthquake, or recordings of glaciers melting in Antarctica, or in the piece Mothership, little snippets of engines booting up and space beeps. A lot of times people will ask me, how do you write for the orchestra? How do you think of all those instruments playing together at once? And I think it is a very daunting thing to imagine. It's analogous, though, to, say, writing a screenplay and having that become a movie. When you're imagining a story, you can, you can imagine it happening. You don't get all hung up on the details of the lighting, the color, the makeup, the shot. That will happen later. Once I realized that the concept of the orchestra as a mothership and the soloists as these kind of docking people in cyberspace, once that came into being, um, I really had something I could run with. I had a lot of information. I had the idea of, of something moving at great speed that then kind of slows down and picks up these visitors. You know, once upon a time, improvisation was very much a part of what we call classical music. Bach was a great improviser on the organ, and Mozart would tear apart the cadenzas of his piano concerti. This piece is a way to welcome that back in. You can be coming from a classical background or a completely different background, a rock background, a jazz background. You don't really even need to read music, you just need to be able to hear it and respond to it. I'm so excited to hear what people will offer us for these improvisation sections. Of course, anything from the orchestra, any orchestral instrument is welcome, but we also would love to hear, say, electric guitars or jazz piano or some kind of interesting percussion, alto saxophone, you name it. If you play it, send it to us. We'd love to hear it. All it takes are good ears and a sense of adventure.